If you're using a Roku in 2026, there are a few settings you really should change. And not because Roku is doing anything illegal, but because by default, your device is collecting far more data than most people realize. Your viewing habits, the apps you open, the ads you interact with, and in some cases, even voice data can all be used to build a profile about you. Now today, I'll show you exactly which settings to change and which ones actually matter. This works on all modern Roku devices, so grab your remote and follow along. The first and most important setting is add personalization. From your home screen, go into settings, then privacy, then advertising. You'll see an option for personalized ads. By default, Roku uses your activity to decide which ads to show you. When you turn this off, Roku will still show ads, but it stops building a behavioral advertising profile around what you watch. This single change dramatically reduces how much of your activity is used for targeting. On some newer Roku versions, you may notice additional options called sensitive ad categories. These only become selectable if personalized ads are turned on. Roku even states that to see fewer ads about sensitive topics, personalized ads must be enabled. This is essentially a trade-off. If you allow personalized ads, Roku lets you fine tune which sensitive topics it targets. If you disable personalized ads entirely, Roku stops behavioral targeting altogether, but you lose access to those category controls. From a privacy perspective, fully disabling personalized ads is still the stronger option because it prevents profile-based advertising rather than trying to manage it. If you do not actively use voice search, you should restrict microphone access. Stay in the privacy settings, choose voice, microphone access, app microphone access, and select it to never allow. This prevents apps from requesting access to your microphone entirely. Now, while Roku states that voice features are optional, leaving this enabled when you don't use it simply creates unnecessary data exposure. In the same voice menu, you'll also find speech recognition. Turning this off ensures that voice clips are not stored or processed to improve recognition accuracy. Voice search is convenient for some people but if you don't rely on it regularly, disabling it is the safer choice. Roku's home screen is not just visual clutter. It also drives recommendations and promotions. Go into settings, then home screen, and hide sections you never use, such as live TV or promotional rows. Now this does not remove your apps or break any features. It simply reduces recommendation tracking and creates a cleaner, faster interface that focuses on the apps you actually use. Now a quick pause here if this video is helping you so far, take a second to hit like. It really helps reach other Roku users who don't realize how much data their device collects. And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do that because I regularly cover Roku, Fire TV and Smart TV privacy without the scare tactics. Next, let's talk about payment information. Under settings, you may see that a payment method is already stored, but there's no option to remove it directly on the Roku itself. 
Instead, Roku displays a message telling you to visit go.roku.com slash pay for more payment options. This is normal behavior. Now, Roku requires payment methods to be managed through your Roku account online, not from the device. If you want to remove or update a card, you'll need to sign into your Roku account using a web browser and manage it there. As a general best practice, it's still cleaner to subscribe directly through services like Netflix or Disney Plus rather than billing through Roku because it keeps subscriptions easier to manage and limits where your payment details are stored. Under network settings, you'll find bandwidth saver. This setting is not about privacy. If you have a data cap, leaving it on makes sense because it pauses long streams. If you have unlimited internet, you can turn it off to avoid interruptions. Choose this option based on your internet plan, not fear of tracking. Under settings, go to theme, then screensaver, and then screensaver start time. Now on many Roku devices, you'll find an option to completely disable the screensaver. If your TV already has its own built-in screensaver, disabling Roku's can help reduce unnecessary animations and slightly improve responsiveness, especially on older hardware. If your Roku does not show a disable option, the best alternative is to choose a simple screensaver and set the start time to the longest available option. Either way, the goal is to minimize background activity without breaking normal behavior. In the system menu, you'll see software update, but there's no option to disable updates on Roku. Now updates are handled automatically by the system. The only thing you can do is manually check for updates to make sure your device is current. This is intentional and it helps ensure security and stability over time. After making these changes, your Roku will still work exactly the same. You'll still see ads, but without personalized tracking. You'll have fewer background data processes, no unnecessary microphone access, and a cleaner interface overall. This is realistic, effective privacy improvement without breaking features. If this video helped you, hit subscribe, turn on notifications, and share this with anyone using a Roku. If you want direct help with your Roku, access to content I can't post publicly, or priority replies, check out my channel memberships. Members get into my private chat group where I answer questions personally. Just tap the join button below. Make sure you subscribe for more streaming tips and device guides, give me a follow over on X and TikTok, and check out the Tanders Tech YouTube channel for more streaming content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.